Previously on The Last of Us, Joel discovers that Ellie has some partial immunity to the cordyceps and the world lost Tess. Then Joel and Ellie set out west to find medical scientists that are hopefully save the world. I have a question. When when you say partial immunity, it is does Ellie have partial or full immunity? Well, I don't. I I would say partial because she gets bit and you, she gets some infection in her arm, but then it heals and recovers. So so for a little bit, I mean, she was getting some type of infection, but then it repelled it. I see. So it's not like doesn't feel it all, but does feel it somewhat. Her body can fight it yeah. off somehow. Okay. Yeah. Like if I had a partial immunity to the flu, I might feel a little under the weather, but then I get over it quickly. But, if it were versus like full immunity where like the virus gets in me and then I just nothing it gets shut down before I even feel mm -hmm. anything. Mm -hmm. Ready for an episode review? Let's do it. Episode review. Tessa's back. Tessa's back. I hope she sticks around forever. Uh, I like this. <laughs> the time skips. The time skips had me had me freaking out because I didn't. So so in the game, Frank is not around. Frank is dead already. So I was like, who is this person? What is going on? I could not figure out if he was going to betray Bill. I could not figure out if if Joel was going to betray Bill. Like this could have been in the time and the life where, where Joel and, and Tess were doing bad shit. This show had me on the edge. Like the tension was just thick the whole time. And also Bill, super romantic. That death scene, oh my gosh. Like... That, that was the right thing to do because Frank was leaving. He had nothing left to live for. Go down with, with Frank. And then the last okay. thing, Ellie has a Beretta. She has a Beretta 71, which is 22 long rifle. It's 10 plus one round. So let's count for the rest of the season how many shots she got. Let's do it. Will she run okay. out like she does in the game? I wonder if they'll show her finding ammo in subsequent episodes. Hmm. We'll see. Uh, you know, for me, I did not feel the tension. Um, I thought it was moving pretty forward and I didn't feel like anybody was going to portray anybody. I wonder why I didn't feel the tension. Interesting. Um, I really love the idea of filling in these backstories for characters because on the journey, Joel and Ellie run into, you know, Bill and Frank's house and they're dead in their bed. And if we hadn't had that backstory to fill in, the impact of it would have been, you know, oh, they're dead. But oh, because we know the backstory, we're like, oh, yeah. Beautiful. Oof. I did feel that Bill and Frank had an unrealistic abundance for so yep. long. <laughs> yep. Like <laughs> in many resources, maybe we could figure out how exactly that abundance was kept alive. But it felt yeah, like it was like the modern world. It didn't feel like there was any step down in, you know, quality of life or anything. Um, and I also drew the conclusion that the world is super depopulated because yeah. there was no raiders or wanderers who just happened upon Bill and Frank's place. Well, that happened guess, once in 20 years. Frank, Frank was wandering. Oh, twice. and Yeah, so twice. Twice in 20 years is really not much at all. Right. And it's for a place that was that tempting, like that should have been right. people should have been going after that. Right. And so they had like windows open, power on, probably cooking with smells going different places. Mm. People are sitting around starving and nothing to do but to find resources. Man. Also, like the landscape would have become very quiet. So that diesel generator that Bill has to, to mm -hmm. get energy, like electricity, that's loud. That's just all the time. I mean, I was recently in a national park and it was dead quiet. I mean, I could hear the birds airflow over their wings as they flew like 50 feet away. I mean, it was incredible how much I could hear because it was so quiet. So a diesel generator miles away. Oh, yeah, I could hear that. You should hear it. Yeah. yeah. So very, very and he cut down trees by his place. So that sound should travel just even better. But is there a sound yeah, if nobody hears? Well, if the world's sufficiently depopulated, yeah, it doesn't matter. That's right. Only Frank heard it. Wait. And to be only, Frank? Only Bill heard it. That's right. Did Frank well, my joke ever is do... nothing now. <laughs> what? Because <laughs> I said I was going to be Frank, but I got the names. I, I met Bill. <laughs> yeah. 
I messed it up too. All right. Okay. Let's let's start the episode. Let's do it. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. The Last of Us, season one, episode three. Let's begin. Let's do it. Yeah, so this picture, I was like, what the? 10 miles west of Boston? I don't see a building in sight. I mean, I, so I'm like West Coast based, but I've been to Boston before and, but I've never been 10 miles west of Boston. Maybe, maybe Boston is just like a nine mile city. I mean, here's Google Maps and looking at the. That's smart. That's smart. This, this is, a, this is about something like this, 10 miles. I'm seeing lots okay. of suburbs. So like not, Waltham? Yeah, maybe Waltham. Maybe even well, maybe that somewhere. That city right below it, Auburndale. Auburndale. Maybe that's what we're talking about. That's about 10 miles west. And there looks to be some type of river stuff there. Maybe. But it's it looks kind of built up. Uh, you know what? Maybe this is just the angle. Like Joel and Ellie happen to be looking down the waterway, but if they were looked to the little bit to the right, they would see the uh, clear water spa company. Could, could. Maybe they just they just <laughs> took the wrong path. They could be taking a spa right now. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Then I was also Sleeping like outside, is, they could sleep at a hotel, the Maplewood at West. Actually, actually, yeah, true. And these trees, that doesn't look like Boston trees to me. Was there climate change in the subsequent twenty years? You know, like That's a good point. They look different than East Coast trees to me. So maybe there's been some climate change and like evergreens or whatever have taken over a little bit more mm. than mm. leafy trees. I'm not sure. Yeah, maybe. Mm. I mean, it, it, we're talking about 20 years of humans emissions going down, 20 years of us like not logging anymore. I wonder what would happen to the landscape. Oh, that's right. In the, in the areas that have been cut down, which trees would get populated first? And maybe this these kind of trees would get populated first. And then eventually it might roll over to leafy trees. I don't know. I have no idea. I'm not a treeologist. I'm not a treeologist either. I think it's a barkologist. It's definitely not an arborist. Definitely not. Oh yeah. This looks you, more oh. East Coasty to me. Yeah. But I was I, I was thinking about that bridge. Look at them trusting that bridge. How, would a bridge of this type last 20 years without maintenance or supervision That's a great question so i guess the first question of this type is this a wooden bridge or is this a iron bridge it looks iron to me so With is a, it it does not look galvanized which means it's exposed to weather hmm. but i do Just know thinking. if it's an iron bridge and a rust covers the outside that can be protective oh. of does the, it passivate is that what it's called so yeah, passive, passive. So like when you have, if you had like a clean block of iron and then the outside would rust, so iron oxide gets all, you know, rusty. Um, if it passivates, it means that the oxygen can no longer penetrate deeper and then you get rust just on the outside. It ends up turning out to be protective. I did not know that was the word. So this could be a passivated bridge. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. Just rust on the Which outside, one? but it's unable to, the oxygen is unable to eat down to the core of the, of the bridge. Okay. Yeah. I just wonder how realistic that is. If you have a passivated bridge for 20 years out in the elements, wind, rain, winter, snow, ice. Thermal fluctuations. Thermal fluctuations. Would eventually the pacification become weaker and weaker or and like water like seep into imperfections and stuff? Right. I think the ice is the really bad part, as you said, because like mm -hmm. the water seeps in and then when it freezes, it expands and it breaks stuff. Yeah. So really is the so, question, so, what's the time scales on this? I don't actually know. If anybody knows, let us know. Yeah. If anyone's a, like a bridgeologist. A bridgeologist, exactly. It's <laughs> ridiculous. ridiculous. This guy. So this guy is a an infected and he's mm -hmm. down inside the gas station that um that Ellie and Joel break into. Ellie finds him in the basement. So my question was, how long has this guy been here? Like I don't know. I mean, I mean, it looks fairly buried in rubble for a long time. Like, like, do the infected have expiration dates? That's that's what I'm asking. I've seen in other zombie shows that zombies don't have an expiration date. They don't need to feed or whatever to continue to live. Okay. So potentially he could have been here for a long time. 
up to 20 or years 20 20 years okay i'm i'm curious how the energetics of that will work um but we'll talk about that a bit more later in the episode mm-hmm. i was also curious about is this guy connected to the mycelia network oh i didn't think about that he could be like a little alarm system yeah i mean what's stopping the underground network of fungus to connecting from from connecting to him I guess nothing except the, no- the network doesn't know he's here. So their little random tendrils that get sent out never find him. Or maybe it can't yeah, burrow through these know. layers of concrete. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I mean, the tendrils reach out to him, but he also creates tendrils that reach out to other sure. fungus. Like that network should just solve itself. Do you know about this Japanese railway? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, yeah. yeah. I know about Incredible. it, but not enough to explain it. <laughs> can, can you take over? <laughs> I mean, all I know is what so the, the Japanese planners put like spores or growth spots at the major cities and let the fungus grow out. And then where the major arteries of the fungus, I'm not sure. Form, that idea, yeah. That's where they built the railway network. Ah, so they let the fungus figure out whatever the easiest path was. And they're like, okay, well, let's okay. dig it up and put it there. Put it there, yeah super creative like wow super clever yeah so i guess the conclusion here is that he is not connected to the network because if he was they would be alerted right no i guess i guess he the he could have alerted them but the the on-call infected are just far enough away they're like walking over i know that's possible but i guess if i were to be in this world i'd have to operate as if they were all connected to the network that's right. That's right. You, so I imagine we don't even, it probably hasn't been studied in the world. Like what's the extent of the network? If something is 300 miles away, can that be, is that communication possible through the network or is it like more isolated cells of network? I don't know. And I, and I guess as time goes on, would that network become just more integrated? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. It kind of so, comes down to the energetics of it. Does the mm-hmm. fungus have enough energy to just continually spread? Right. So I think we're learning here that this guy did not have enough energy to continually spread. And the fungus network did not reach him. Find him. Find him. But he does have enough energy to, un- unless he's fairly new, which he could, he could be. Mm-hmm. But otherwise, he may have been here for a long time, in which case the, the infected could just last a long time. Last a long time, yeah. Okay. That's okay. a great question. So we'll see. Ellie should be running on the fact on the idea that any uh, infected you see is connected to the network because you don't know if it's connected or not, so you have to act as if it is. So exactly. They should have left quickly. High risk. High she didn't risk. even let it be see her. Mm-hmm. So this is the store they're in, hmm. and uh, Joel was like, "It's been picked clean," and I was like, "Has it?" No way. Like, okay, so this is picked clean for a modern, prosperous society. There's nothing in here of value. A couple of things that I saw was a cord down here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's got metal Heck, and, you know, that Even that wireframe, you could use yeah, that. I mean, that uh, the wireframe in the, the ice chest, just right oh, where, yeah, where you yeah. were looking. Storage. Yeah, you could take that out and storage, or you use it as like you're you're dipping into stuff. Like I don't know, mm-hmm. a modern French fry basket. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, and, and I imagine wire pa- exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's wiring in the arcade machine. There's probably wiring in here. I saw a, there's a mirror back here. I mean, not only wiring in the arcade, but like capacitors, resistors, inductors, like yeah. electronic components that you could desolder, you could harvest and put into other yeah. things. And then even these shelves here, even though there are some of them beat to shit, um, they could be very useful. Super useful. You know, metal pieces. I mean, you don't, you can't manufacture metal pieces in good quantities anymore. Right. That could, you know, like unless useful. you're willing to build a forge and and mine some ore. Like, how are you making metal anymore? Like, yeah, you're better off just taking this and trying to reshape it. Mm-hmm. So I do see that the the easy items have been picked, but. I'm seeing a lot of resources here. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. I agree. Heck, mm-hmm. even just just use this place as shelter. That's right. That's right. Yeah, because you could board it up and clean it up. You can do that. Turn turn into a boarding house. Yep. 
So I was skeptical of his. I don't think it's been pickling. Oh, and then he puts his gun away in the floorboards. I, I was like, isn't he going to Tommy's place somewhere out west? I mean, how realistic is it he's going to come back here and retrieve this weapon? Wouldn't it be better to trade the weapon than to store it? Is it too heavy? Oh man, so so I'm I'm super conflicted now because I like that he did this because he's like I'm not going to be able to find much ammo out there. In which case, I'm now carrying you know eight to twelve pounds of I got like five rounds left. Right, that that's not worth it because it's going to be stuff you got to carry around. Also, it it shows people a sign of threat just right away. Right, where maybe you maybe you don't want them to think you're a threat, so you you stash it. Now, but on the other hand. What if you do find ammo? You're not going to come back for this. <laughs> and, and and also, you could potentially trade it with someone. Hmm. Difficult. But I guess they are going to Bill and Frank's, and they know they're loaded up. True. Joel knows that they're going to Bill and Frank's, so mm -hmm. he knows he can get stuff there. So maybe it's not worth it for the next several, I don't know how long it is, 10, 20 miles or whatever they're trekking to Bill and Frank's. So he's like, stash it, not worth it. Okay. 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 That and it does seem to be a trustworthy spot because nobody found his other stuff. That's right. Or at least a trustable spot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, I'm fine with it now. I was like, oh my god. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> this picture. So, so on top of this hill is a plane crash when the internet pops in here. And mm -hmm. I was I was surprised by how neat neat and compact this crash site was. Like I I, I had mm -hmm. the impression that when planes crash, the debris is spread out like miles. Like just just a lot of momentum. Yeah, I had the same thought that like this is a way too clean of a crash. But then I thought there is there was a crash, the Avianca Flight 52 that I remembered from one of those documentaries I watched. Oh, so this is a real crash? This is a real crash in 1990. And it was they were out of fuel. They ran out of fuel without knowing. And they, mm -hmm. they softly landed on a hillside. And the plane is, for the most part, intact. You know? Of course, it's, you know, broken. And but actually, I, it looks pretty looks, si close, actually. Yeah, yeah. Pretty similar, right? This so we're saying that three parts. this pilot slowed down as much as they could. They came in a fairly flat landing like like yeah. like a thud versus a skirt right and they did so when they were out of fuel which makes sense they were flying around trying to keep their options open when they're totally out of fuel no choice land or softly on the land it breaks up and the survivors oh, leave you're saying if if there was fuel then you get an explosion so if you're out right. of fuel that's actually better right and this was a I this see. was a I see. this crash was uh, a fuel exhaustion situation Hmm. which is why it's in such good shape. So I think this is very consistent. That's a nice touch. That's a nice touch. I buy it. Yeah. Yeah. So what is this? Uh, yes. So this was, I I don't understand how the cordyceps work and the energetics of it. So, so Joel explains this as this was Fedra having killed some humans as they were still human. And so they shot them so that they wouldn't become infected. But does, do the cordyceps care if you're alive? Like, do, cause like normal mushrooms don't care if you're alive or dead. Like it's just, just stuff they can decompose. So, so why does the fungus care if the person is dead or alive? And then if you look to the left here, we have that same picture of, of this infected that lasts forever. So why wouldn't the cordyceps just infect the dead bodies and then they could last forever? Like why does the, why does the, why does the cordyceps care that the person's alive? So in other zombie shows and movies, I believe the zombies that whatever the infection can reanimate the dead. Okay. But I guess we're saying here that the cordyceps cannot reanimate the dead. I mean, if it or, was a virus, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Or, or maybe just it's not necessarily people are thinking straight, like, oh, the cordyceps is going to work this way, and therefore I need to decimate a population. Maybe it's just straight up panic, and people are just sure. shooting people, and this is what happened. Not necessarily like 
well thought through as a policy. Sure. You know what I mean? So, so I, if it was a virus, I would understand that the thing needs to be alive um, unless it could somehow reanimate, but it's, it's a fungus. Like fungus don't care if you're alive or not. Like, like fungus grow on fungi grow on dead things all the time. I mean, they can grow on living things if the living thing doesn't have a sufficient immune response to reject it, but fungus grow on dead stuff. So, so I didn't understand why these humans would be, wouldn't turn. And, and I agree with what you said about like panic, just kill stuff. But like, because I get it, like you don't want you don't want these bodies to turn into infected and then come attack you. But if you killed them and they're dead now, and they're being attacked by a fungus, shouldn't the fungus still do its thing? Like, so maybe the maybe the cordyceps still eats the human body, but cannot reanimate the human body. So in the sense, they're mm-hmm. less dangerous because they're not running around biting people. They're just infected so I, I guess, corpses. Yes. So so so. Did these bodies turn or did these bodies, they died as humans, but did they turn into infected later and then decay anyway? Or did they just never turn at all? I thought Joel was under the impression that they never turned. And in the panic of the infection, non-infected people were killed. And this is their decomposing bodies or decomposed bodies. It wasn't panic. It was intentional. Oh, intentional. Well, I mean... Policy created in panic. Oh, okay, cool, cool. Let's let's talk about this. Was it panic? Because if Fedra allowed in as many people as they could into the quarantine zone, and then they're like, we can't support anyone else, then if they kick people out, those people could then become infected and attack them again. So it's mm-hmm. actually like asset denial to like kill the people that you can't take care of because the people that you can't take care of could come back and attack you. So I, mm-hmm. I don't think it was panic. I think I think that was purely intentional. Okay, but then okay, so it's was it a morally wrong thing to do? Ooh, Does that's a hard it, question. Because if it's panic, there's some I don't know intention taken away from the actors. But right. if it's a no choice situation where it's like I got to kill everyone else to protect the limited resources we have. We're essentially triaging homo sapiens. Yes. But you think about it and you make the call decisively and willfully. Does that make you a bad person or is that just you put in a bad situation? I I, I think it is the latter scenario where they're like, we need to triage humanity. We need to kill off these, I don't know, however many people there are so mm-hmm. that we can protect the ones we can. Oh, hey, that's a theme from, from the show. <laughs> so, so, I mean... More ethically, morally, you are killing other sentient humans, but if you have to, you have to. Yeah. I mean, even if you didn't kill them, they mm-hmm. you still have resource management problems, right? Right. I mean, if you don't shoot them to death, are they going to starve to death or are they going to be eaten by other people? Like, maybe this is the better option. Maybe it's the, well, the best way to say it is the least worst option. Sure. It's the it's the option that fits the scenario. It's the least worst fit. You know, and this happens where people condemn other people's actions um, because like, I wouldn't make that decision. I would do the right thing. But then they're never in like a resource constrained, time constrained, knowledge constrained environment where right. suboptimal right. and difficult decisions have to be made. If I was trapped underneath a boulder for 127 hours, I would just lift the boulder. Just lift it. Just lift the boulder up. Okay. Cut off my the arm. Up, no, no, and then you pull your boulder. arm out. What's the problem? Yeah. What's the problem? Like, no, no, it's different when you're there. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, I want this. This is this is Bill's secret underground bunker. Like, this is already his basement. He has a deeper basement. It'd be so cool. Even if I don't have, like, guns or whatever in there. Like, it's a cool hangout place. See a little secret hangout place in my house. Yeah. And it makes sense this, the trunk or whatever chest being on top of the door explains why, you know, the people rounding up the civilians to go to the QZ, why they didn't see him. Yeah. So pretty cool. Super cool. Yeah, there's this one. Here's the, another view oh, yes. of the hang, hangout inside. Oh, no, this is still outside. 
this is still inside. This is the same object, but from a different angle. And he has like steps built into it. He's got a, mm -hmm. a, I don't know if you can see that right in the middle there, that long black pipe. It's like structurally quite good. Oh, 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 I'll, I'll circle it. It's way in here. Slice. Bam. Oh, I see. That's like structurally strong. And so mm -hmm. also if you bump into it, it's not gonna damage the front of this frame thing. Like <laughs> this is nicely designed. Oh yeah, he's definitely if got I, his if stuff I, in order. If I remember, he also has like a counterweight in there, so he's not just brute lifting it. Like, this is nice. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Oh my gosh, there's a bear on the couch though. I just noticed <laughs> I that. did not notice yeah. that. How do you sit in the middle? <laughs> yeah. You can't sit in the middle. Ah, you make an adjustment. Yeah. Maybe you don't want to sit in the middle. Social distancing. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, the Home Depot scene. Awesome. So the. So the town is evacuated and Bill is now alone in the town and he goes around town gathering supplies and he goes to the Home Depot. My question is, yeah. what's priority? The Home Depot to gather supplies, but how do you know to use the supplies? You'd have to learn. Where can you learn this? The library. Is that where you're going with that? No. <laughs> <laughs> where, where were you going at? What's priority? Oh, like what's actual priority? Yeah, I don't know. We can just take a guess. What's the actual priority? I was thinking if he's, they seem pretty confident that nobody else is showing back up in town, why not leave it at the Home Depot and use the Home Depot as your warehouse? Oh, yeah. Just move into the Home Depot. Yeah. Now you have all the supplies. You have all the supplies there. Move into the Costco. Fuck yeah. The, the only reason you would take them out of the Home Depot is you're like, okay, scavengers are going to come pick this clean. But... So you don't want to expose yourself. But that also applies to the house he's in, you know? Right. Yeah, like he needs... I, okay, so I totally get it that the warehouse or the the store is a target for other people that are going to look for supplies, including Fedra. Fedra can be like, we need building supplies. Let's go to Home Depot. But so that makes, that makes sense then that you would want to bring supplies back to your home. But it also means you want a very low-key home, like, a, like yeah. a home that looks like abandoned. Yeah. You want it to look abandoned, feel abandoned, smell abandoned. And just be have, not worth it for people to go into. Yeah. You just glance like at it as you're walking by. Not worth. Just another abandoned house. Yep. Nothing in there. Yep. Yep. That's not what happens. But So what does he take as priority? I see some buckets. Okay. Some, buckets. what is this? Cordage maybe? Some, some more cordage. It looks like like heavy ground electrical. Maybe. Some, I'm not sure. You got some really chicken, some listening. chicken wire there on the left. Chicken wire, yeah. Yeah. Some fence. planks, some pipes. Galvin, yeah. I guess that's a priority. I guess if we asked a prepper or survivalist, what what do they say? What do you grab at the Home Depot? Put in the comments. Toilet paper. Toilet paper. <laughs> wasn't there wasn't there one prepper on like on like TV? He was like toilet paper. We're gonna run out. And he called it. He called. Yeah. He totally called it. Yeah. During the pandemic, I was just bare handing it. That's gross. I did not do that. Jesus. I I already had a bidet ready to rock because everyone should have a bidet. They're awesome. Mm -hmm. This is a diesel generator. So he mm -hmm. puts in diesel and uses the combustion to to get electrical. But wouldn't this be super loud? Yeah, yeah. Like, isn't that isn't that drawing attention to him? Shouldn't it be shouldn't it be like stealth as possible? Yeah, we talked about how okay. So in the in the city, noise, cars, trucks everywhere, it's one rumbly noise that's lost in the sea of noise. Who cares? Yeah. But in a society that's collapsed, you know, and all you have to do is survive as a person, you know, a diesel generator <gasps> is going to be extremely loud, and you're going to hear it from a long way away. Not only loud, but in a world where a lot of machinery has shut down you and you only expect nature sounds, this has a very unique sound signature. That's true. It's not just like loud birds that are like, you'd be like, oh, that's a loud bird. He's like, no, that's something uniquely man-made. That is mm -hmm. what's going on there. Yeah. So not only is it loud, it probably smells as well. So you get a, a diesel generator, exhaust, yeah. the diesel fuel, the oil. Now, yeah, it's a similar situation. You know, downwind of this thing, you'd be like, that's oil. I'm going that way. Mm. Mm. Um, also, look how exposed some of these parts are to the elements. That's I assume right. he puts a cover over it. He has to put a cover over it. Otherwise, he this does, is all going to get rained on, snowed on. 
Not while it's operating, is it? He must. He must. Otherwise, it wouldn't last 20 years. I don't know. Curious. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, it's just this gauge here. Hmm. That's already rusting a little bit. What's a little bit. Here? What's going on here? A little bit. <sighs> Got to rotate that clip. Got to rotate hold that the, hold, hold the box shut. Where are you going to find a replacement? Oh, the Home Depot. The Home Depot. Oh, so this is the uh, tripwire. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then the zombie hits the trip, or the infected hits the tripwire, and then he gets shot from a gun in the tree. And the gun Sorry. was super clever. Yeah, yeah. The gun is literally just a shot shell with a mouse trap on it that's attached mm -hmm. to the string. So super clever. Yeah, like you're not going to leave a gun outside and get rest and stuff. Now, what I was worried about this is that's, again, super loud. Like yeah. you have a shot shell that goes bang, like, That'll draw people's attention. Like right. this should, should he be focusing on silent kills? As low profile so, as possible. Yeah. I do like that he is, he is like autonomous things, things he can just leave alone and they do their thing. But I think, I think it's got to be quiet. I agree. And what if there was an infected child? You know, he just, the infected child walks through the, the thing and then shoots over the top of the head. The infected child ah, continues. That's right. Right, and so he hears the gunshot. He's like, "Car, car, car!" But Got actually, him. like little little infant baby zombie is yep. infected. Is still crawling in, getting close. That's right. And then while he's sleeping, <sighs> yang, 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 yang. Okay. yeah. So noise in the apocalypse is not like noise in modern world. It's very different. Right. Very stand out. Yeah. So this is the place. I believe this is Frank's house. No, sorry, Bill's house right here. Mm -hmm. Wait, no. Mm -hmm. the, the the front yard is bigger. This isn't it. This maybe is his side yard. I think the front yard is around the corner. Around the corner. Okay. Like it's the same. It's the right house, just around the corner. Oh, I see over here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This is the front yard. Yeah. Okay. I understood. This is the side. I got it. Okay. Yeah. And I've this seen is some fence. weird side entrances to homes. Yeah. This is mm -hmm. his fence. His powered yeah. fence. So four yeah. years later, when I thought about this, well, first of all, library man, like this guy, he knows yeah. some home engineering, like he, he's, he's yeah. figured that out. Um, what I was confused by is how is this thing powered? Like, is he still running off of diesel four years later? Like, is think... there, is he getting it from the same gas station? Like how long does that fuel last in there? Like there is a shelf life. Yeah. I mean, there's a shelf life of diesel. There's the, mm -hmm. they show him with the diesel generator, mm -hmm. but how long does a diesel generator last without maintenance and replacement parts? And right. the fuel has a shelf life. I just, I don't is see it, it lasting for four years. Is it running continuously or does he have some type of gigantic battery structure? I mean, we, we know that he can make batteries, but like the charge required to run stuff all the time, it's quite substantial. Right. And we never see any kind of resource constraints in the sense like, oh, I got to power down and I'll turn it on for an hour a day and then power down. It leaves you know, it on all the I time. It's kind of left it on all the time. So that means that the generators maintain probably has at least two or three so he can cycle them and maintain them as they go. He has enough fuel to do that. And he must have some power storage because all the wasted energy generated by the diesel generator is not used in the moment. Right. He's needs to be grabbed. I don't exactly know how diesel generators work in terms of power delivered versus load on the generator, but some there need to be some resource management there. Yeah. And I feel like Bill would do it because he is that personality. Like he would he would dial it in and not waste stuff. Mm -hmm. I just we don't see it. We don't see it, yeah. Also this is the house again. Um oh so yeah this is just a oh, different this is house then. Different this different oh, layout. So Wait what? So oh, no. the place, this the is place the that place we saw right in here. the previous picture was not his house then. This is here. That's the place in the previous picture, right? Yeah, and then this maybe. is his house. So if we go to the previous picture, here's that smaller house. Here's the gondola. With gondola. the curve. Gazebo. 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 Gondola is like a, never mind. Here's the church. Type thing, yeah. Church. Yeah. And here's the, here's the house. So that's his house. Yeah. Yeah. 
So on this picture, this is the house. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the Very small nice. house. The gate is off camera here. And here's the church and the gazebo. Okay. Mm. Okay. Mm. Okay. So he's got this he's got this fence all along this perimeter here. Holy crap. All electrified. That's hard to defend. Whoa. That's hard to defend because say say someone is right there. Mm -hmm. Like for him to defend that part of the fence from being attacked, he could not defend that from his house. He'd have to get out there and get a line of sight on them. Right. That's hard to defend. And and just just to keep situational awareness of all of the perimeter, yeah. um, you have to sleep, you know, you have to eat, you have to do other things. You can't be, assuming he had full coverage with his ca cameras and powered at all times, it's still difficult to keep situational awareness. You would need you would need help people. You would need patrols, different things. I will say that it looks like he's got the biggest house in the neighborhood. He does, yeah. Not Good that it matters because nobody else is living there, but. That's true. I wonder also, if he went through all the other homes shocked. and like harvested stuff. He them. they must have, yeah, they must have. I was saying they were look how close they are to the city. People wandering around looking for supplies. This is, I think there'll be a lot of people stumbling on this, but we only see it happen twice because Frank shows up right. and that band of people that kept getting flamethrowered. Right, we see it twice. So that's how depopulated the world is. That's right. That such a abundant location is not under constant siege. And it's not like he's off in the woods somewhere. Like he's right on a main road. Yeah. Hmm. Very, very strange. Low population. Yeah, low, very low population. Okay, so at this point, here is Frank in the hole. And we don't know if he's good or bad. He's He says he's coming from, I think he was from Baltimore, from down in Maryland. He's going from their QZ up to Boston. And he happens across Bill's house. But we don't know if he's good or bad at this point. And there's just so many security failures that, that Bill uh, lets this guy slip in. Yeah, I don't think Bill was ready to encounter people. Right. He's, he was too trusting. If he got this, if he got a stream of people who are liars and even not even liars, just desperate people who are willing to kind of do what it takes to get what they need. I don't know if he would let Frank into this place. I mean, Frank could be a scout for a raiding party. That's right. Even unintentionally. Say he goes to, say he makes it to Boston and then he gets caught up with some bad parts of Frederick or even maybe the fireflies. And they're like, we need resources and they mm. torture Frank and he gives up Bill's location. Like that's, that's a possibility. Yeah. You know, I was just thinking maybe Bill should have a like dilapidated house. That's like really in bad shape. That is his residence uh -huh, that uh -huh. he shows visitors to. And he's like, well, this is it. I'm making Not it by not giving him like the five course meal or whatever. <laughs> right. Yeah. And then he's got like on inside the mountain, he's got a mansion. He's got a mole mansion. Mm -hmm. It's just, just swimming pools for days, just underground. It's awesome. Yeah. Cause didn't Bill gave Frank on day one, that like really nice meal with wine, the rabbit paired with the wine. Yep. Yeah. Even if Bill, even if Frank was this great person, it's almost a duty of him to, to share this with others because other people are starving and suffering elsewhere. Deep. It's duty too. Yeah, right? As another human, you see other humans in suffering. Like, the right thing to do is help. And the truth is, Bill needs patrols and other people to help him guard his prosperity. So, Yeah. So you have to like take them in in a way in which they will be on your team. Yeah. Look at this pecs. <laughs> I was like, what a but, man. <laughs> Frank is like, I'm starving. I haven't eaten in two days. Jacked. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay. To be fair, he said, I haven't eaten in two days. That doesn't mean he isn't jacked. He just means he hasn't eaten in two days. Okay. But he's got, and, he's and, got like, Big arms, well-developed muscles, fat yeah, stores, looking healthy as hell. He's not yeah. some scavenger not eating in the woods for days. 
which actually you know, this should be alarm bells for for bill be like this guy true. told me he's starving but he looks quite good like he, he looks like real good <laughs> maybe he's just like he's like i can't not you know i don't care <laughs> yeah. although i guess i guess i learned this from mm, naked and afraid i think you can go like three weeks without eating but it's three days without water like that's the real mm-hmm. iffy one but i i think muscle mass muscle tone muscle volume all mm-hmm. decrease pretty rapidly well, yeah, in yeah. calorie deficit environments yeah so you're not going to get you know look at the look at the arms what a look man. at the shoulders mm-hmm. i mean it's ridiculous mm-hmm. jacked look on his yeah. on his left shoulder so the one right from my perspective mm-hmm. you're even getting that light over yeah, across his delt right there. Woo, that's yeah. developed delt super developed he's looking real healthy this guy <laughs> after the world has been breaking down he's doing them the lateral side raises he's, do, he's getting, doing them yep <laughs> ridiculous but looking good yeah looking great. Woo! this scene this cut i was i did not see this coming i, I really i really thought frank was going to do bill dirty he's going to sneak attack do some shit um but here they are they actually they worked out quite yeah. well they worked out super well. They jumped to three years. They're having a relationship, having a couple fights about interior decoration. Classics. At what point should, at what point should Frank be carrying a gun, like like a thigh rig, just like just like Bill? I mean, all the time. But we're saying time, it's right? so depopulated that humans and infected pretty much rare. So you might not need it all the time. Ah, uh, so it's so rare that if there was a problem, Frank could go back to the house to get his stuff. That's right. Like That's right. you're going to, if it's so rare and you're going to get like one or two people. So, so Bill can more or less right. handle it. Okay. Right. Yep. The strawberry scene. <laughs> this is, first of all, it was so sweet, super sweet, <laughs> super sweet between them. Um, yeah. But look at these, look at these fucking berries. They're so, I they're know. so large and like deep red and when they bite into yeah. it it's like inside it doesn't have that white part that's like bittery yeah. like it's yeah. that's like yeah. real this is some gmo strawberries gmo strawberries survive the apocalypse hell yes yeah hell yeah and i was like how did <laughs> how did frank grow this these strawberries in secret strawberries take i don't yeah. know at least months to months? grow i don't know yeah. how long maybe just <laughs> bill just doesn't garden. go yeah <laughs> a secret garden like that band from the 90s <laughs> Yeah, so so Bill just doesn't go to this part of the yard, I guess. <laughs> just, yeah, but I thought about it. I was like, maybe, maybe, maybe Frank was like, like, don't go here for this time. It's going to be my surprise secret. And Bill, he like, he's so nice. Like, he would. I think he would do that and be like, all right, all right. You know, you're doing something. Okay, leave me alone. So don't you need to walk Wait. the grounds and have situational awareness of what's going that's on right. at all times? That's right. That that's more. That's. That takes precedent. Bill would need to know what's around in the compound for security reasons. Mm. Yeah. And like it would be daily walk because yep. you need to know, is anything changing? Anything weird? Anything broken? <laughs> right. Did one of these shotgun traps get misaligned and therefore it's no longer effective? You just go in right. there and check out, make sure everything's okay. Yep. And yeah, yeah, it would take a lot of work. Oh my gosh. Ooh. Ooh, this fight so so frank is running out trying to find bill bill went out to fight by himself first of all wake up frank with you so that way you get second set of eyes on things yeah. secondly bill what are you doing stay <laughs> undercover like like we see even more here he's shooting outside like like first of all you have a scope <laughs> like yeah. the point of the scope is that you can shoot from far away but now you're you're putting yourself at potential risk. Like you gotta be safe. You gotta stay hidden as much as you can. I mean, he he takes a scoped rifle, stands in the middle of the road in the rain. In the rain, where it's actually lit by his abundance of traps. Like holy hell, so many traps. Yeah. So the enemy can see you. You can't see the enemy because you're blinded by light. You're using a scoped rifle while standing up. Like yeah. this, you're Crouch. tactically. This is the worst possible situation here. He could be right where Frank was. Frank yeah. is using that little short wall as as a as a prop for his arm. Then he doesn't have to hold it up and get tired and sway. That's right. Yeah, yeah. He could be yeah, up in their need- roof. That's where he should be. He should be in the roof with little vent holes, little little portcullises, and just snipe people from there. Yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. At least from a window. But then you also need he should Frank be in the church. There. Yeah, yeah. Be in the steeple because then you get full, you know, 360, 360 coverage. coverage. Pew, 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 pew. And you probably because he's looking through the scope and trying to aim. He definitely needs Frank there as a spotter to be like, okay, yeah, what's going on around here? Oh, sh somebody's back here, you know, because he, he's not going to have the situational awareness. There's only two of them. That's right. That's right. That's right. I was very upset with uh, Bill's tactics here. Bill. He like, he like, but I guess, I guess maybe, maybe he's like, he's a survivalist. He's not a, a prepper. Like he survived. So he like, he set up all the situation, this defenses, but it only happens this one time in the 20 years. So maybe he's just really lost his cool. Well, is that a practice? Lost his cool? Panicked? Panicked. That's, I guess possible. Yeah. Yeah. And then 10 years later. 10 years later. So, so this, so Bill, he's basically Ron Swanson. <laughs> he, like, he pretty much is like, he like builds stuff himself, super rugged, super masculine, awesome beard. And like, he gets shot and he's like, he just tells Frank, like, this is what you need to do. And then he comes back to life. <laughs> he's like, he's super rugged. What a man. Yep. And I guess Frank now has uh, some kind of wasting disease. Some type Sucks. of neurodegeneracy something, yeah. yeah. Sucks. There's nothing you can do. And he said that even the modern Ooh. world didn't have a cure, so. And yeah, it was, this This scene hit me because it was so, like, poignant. Like, mm -hmm. the previous scene, they're outside jogging, and Bill's like, sorry for getting older faster than you. But then they totally flip. They flip, yeah. Oof fucking life oh this is the last meal yeah and what i noticed from this last meal is look at them candles <laughs> them candles are healthy <laughs> like that means that they have 20 years of candles how do they have that many candles i i mean they had 20 years of wine they had 20 years of candles they had 20 years of power they had 20 years of laundry detergent and washing machine look how clean they are yeah all of that seems fine i don't like the candles the candles <sighs> you burn them and then they're gone like like yes yeah, some of the wax isn't burnt but like you can like remelt it but mm -hmm. there isn't that much candles around like mm -hmm. what true yeah also the windows are wide open wide open You're like i've got power and here you are world please notice that i'm here Look inside my fishbowl. You can see me in here eating awesome food, dressed up like fancy people. Yeah. And people from 10 miles away are like, what's going like, on around? What's that one light? Awesome. What's, what's that over there? Everything There's is no, darkness. Yeah. Everything is dark except, except for that place. Oh, is that a generator? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> seems like it is. <laughs> so, yeah. So they, they still have like vegetables and meat. So they're, not only are they... Maintaining the security situation, maintaining power, making candles. They're also raising chickens and farm animals and growing tomatoes, even the fancy yellow ones. Yeah, the fancy ones. <laughs> oh, my gosh. There's even candles out here. Yeah. Right there. There's candles. Yep. Like, they're eating, you know, and the candles are in the hall. I guess it's the last night, so they don't care. They're just going to light all the candles that they have. Yeah, maybe these are their death candles they've been saving oh, for a while. It's death candles. Oh my god, death candles. Death candles. They have such a supply of wine. Wow. Also, can we say what a good husband Bill is? Like, yeah, they moved their bedroom to downstairs because Frank couldn't go upstairs mm -hmm. anymore. That's right. Yeah, and he also saved that particular wine, and. Mm -hmm. So mm. they could have their first meal again. Oh, sweet. Oh, so romantic. Romantic. Goddamn, Bill. They also had paints for 20 years. Paints. Variety of paints, yeah. Yeah. Although I wonder you could re you could make paints out of like different soils and different shells of but stuff. Like you, you could. But now you're- Although you're blue. Made. Blue is the hard one. Yeah. Just the, you're, <laughs> they're maintaining power. They're maintaining food supplies. They're maintaining security. They're main, they're doing laundry, mm -hmm. and they're like, so, you know what? We have some free time. Let's make some paints. <laughs> so it's, Bill is a true Renaissance man. I mean, it's, made all these yeah, things to yeah, facilitate yeah. Frank. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. I like oh him. yeah. Uh, and this is, 
after Bill and Frank have died, passed, mm-hmm. passed, and Joel shows up, enters the key code, enters the key code, and so so Frank and Bill have passed for a while, but this thing's still powered. What is powering this? I mean, I guess he just they just never turned off the generator. They filled her up and then left the generator running and then they died and the generator is still running. So when it runs out of juice, the fence powers down and Joel happens upon them before it runs out of juice. So I, I guess we don't know the state of their decay, but so it's possible that like they happen to have died the night before, in which case, okay. Mm-hmm. But if this generator has been running for weeks, a month, two maybe, like, I don't know how how big are diesel fuel tanks like i think it should have been out by then i mean based on the fact that it is still running and maybe you get a day or two of power then mm-hmm. that's how that's the delta t we have to work with so they oh, died know, right? and then one to two days later within that time frame joel shows up i mean maybe maybe bill was like let's make a gigantic slowly funneling diesel tank like maybe but name's still like a week like how big of a tank can he get right that's right but but even even if he has a diesel generator like it's still an engine it's still piston rings pistons and piston rings like violently going up and down the cylinders like eventually those wear out like a, a diesel engine running all the time can that last 20 years i don't think so so, so there's, um, there's kind of okay. there's two things going on here first off can the diesel generators be maintained without modern supplies for ten, for 20 years. I doubt that. I doubt but then that. also after they've died, is there mm-hmm. enough fuel in the diesel generator that is currently running to power the fence until Joel gets there? So I guess there's kind of two things going on there. It's, it must be that Joel shows up within one or two days and yes, they can maintain the generators somehow. I guess. For 20 years. How, I don't know, it's amazing. <laughs> what? Let, let's let's think about how could we make this work so so and all power sources are available to us so so diesel i think you would run out of fuel and the engines would break down uh, like that the, the combustion chambers if you i could imagine this happening if he had like an underground spring on top of a hill and then you you let the water run down you turn a little water mill um, but even then, like your dynamo, wherever that water comes down and spins a motor in reverse, that still needs to be maintained. And if you can't maintain that, will it last 20 years? Um, same with solar panels, same with wind. Like there, are, well, with wind, there's a, still a moving part that'll break down eventually. Um, with solar panel, you need cleaning. Um, what else? Is, I mean, I guess the wires get damaged by UV. Like, so how, did, how I, could we make this fence work? I, th- I think it's Im- I th- so <gasps> how could you do it because if you have solar it's intermittent you need to clean them they break so you need mm-hmm. some kind of you would also need some kind of storage to keep the voltages consistent mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. batteries and other storage mechanisms have either moving parts or corrode or i'm just not sure how they're going to maintain power without underground nuclear underground nuclear <laughs> I mean, no, no, those are hard to maintain as well. I mean, yeah, those are, yeah that's a heat source, which then yeah. spins turbines. Right. Turbines so are still wear spinning. Right. And I just, so maybe he has like, he, they showed one diesel generator. Maybe he has like 20 of them and he just cycles through them. Or maybe when one breaks really badly, he can scavenge parts from one of them. And maintain the others so he must have maybe a fleet of oh. diesel generators maybe that'll do it the, oh but then the home depot degrades. does home depot have fuel generators or, or electrical generators i think mini ones maybe 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 but yeah as exactly you said the fuel degrades like i know from motorcycle stuff if you're not riding your motorcycle every six for like six months you're supposed to put in a fuel stabilizer because it oxidizes or something so that means all the fuel that's like sitting in the gas station, unless someone's maintaining it, doesn't that go bad eventually? Maybe he has generators that run on ethanol and he can ferment that and supplement okay. the supplies. Okay, I could buy that. He has a fleet Throw of some... ethanol generators plus a fermentation system. 
that supplies... A little bit of home brewing? Yeah. It's you know, honestly, a... I would I would hang out with Bill. He seems like a super cool guy, actually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's the most likely way. Ethanol. Ethanol. Because then you can... Your, your source of ethanol, you can just grow corn outside. Do they grow food? Oh, they do grow food because they have those fancy tomatoes. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. And the arugula. That was one of Bill's highest priority was to get the farm up and running. Yeah. Although how much farm... Farming is not easy. Plus they have winters in Boston. So you got food storage. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so, so I guess... The good thing about the cold is that you can have things outside and they don't rot as quickly. The right. bad thing is that you can't grow anything for a while and things right. will freeze and die. That's right. I guess where's, would it be worth it for Bill to try to move somewhere with more temperate climate? Or is that risk of transportation not worth it? I think not worth it. Not worth it. So many things to consider here. Just just yeah. because this fence is up and running <laughs> after their it's death. Not. Lots of implications from that operational fence. Oh yeah, so this this one, this was in the refrigerator that was still running. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and somehow Joel recognized this as a some kind of battery for the car. I didn't understand. This is sulfur here? I think sulfur so. Sulfur here. So, what is, what's the chemistry of a battery? I didn't understand. So I think his, his understanding from this is you put in water with the sulfur and I guess that makes sulfuric acid I guess somehow I'm not a chemist and then he saw the battery lid there and he's like oh that's a clue so I can make the electrolytes through with this sulfur mm. stuff now uh I thought sulfuric acid is like very acid it's like a strong acid I am not a specialist here so so I mean he could easily over concentrate that and then eat away at the battery oh that's right yeah so if, if anybody knows anything about car batteries or how this might work, uh, let us know in the comments because right. it wasn't obvious to me how this was just, you know, just going to whip up a car battery in my refrigerator. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. I just realized this is like a, a lack of my knowledge. Like I understand it electrically, but not chemically. Right. I learned it a long time ago about how the electron is, the is ions sent move. through yep, yep. Yeah, and all that stuff. But I don't know the chemistry well at all. And mm -hmm. <laughs> Bill just is like, here you go. Here's some sulfur. And you're like, what, what the, Can, is there a manual? Mix some amount, <laughs> some amount with yeah. some amount of water. And yeah. yeah, roll the dice. I was like the, the, the state of these containers That's and their contents oh, yeah. in amazing shape. This is 20 years down the road. Yeah. I was like, not, not even like. Uh, not, he, he never even touched this thing with oil in his hands. That's right. <laughs> Bill and Very Frank maintaining guy. their containers. I mean, kudos. Mm -hmm. And then here, so many items. And it's so, so clean. Stuff. And wasted mm -hmm. light. Like, turn these monitors off. Turn, turn right. these lights off. I mean, right. you know, just because it's wasted power. But they have such an abundance of power because their their power sources are so consistent they right. just could just waste power no problem it was they it's amazing have accent lighting <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah gotta get my guns with accent lighting <laughs> and the lighting isn't bright enough for him to actually see what the guns are it's just it's just for looks mm -hmm. like <laughs> yeah yeah ridiculous oh yeah and then they still have toilet paper 20 years they had 20, 20 years supply of toilet paper i mean at minimum 20 years supply if yeah. you have 20 years supply, you probably got more i mean this is like how much i mean this is piles and piles of toilet paper i mean i guess it's possible that it took them 20 it took so they have access to all the other homes in the neighborhood but still 20 years that no way no way i mean <sighs> Yeah, I guess there's a lot away. of toilet paper at Home Depot and all the other stores around, and it's for just for two people. But they're, they're but you're talking about sending raided. You're talking about raiding parties or scavenging parties going out, leaving the. I never got the impression that Frank and Bill ventured very far away from the house. 
I mean, to wherever the Home Depot is, that's the farthest we know about. Yeah. Just, it just seems crazy. I mean, hey, he's a prepper. Sorry, a survivalist. He's not a prepper? There it is. He's a survivalist. <laughs> My bad. My bad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> ah, so Ellie finds finds Frank's gun inside the, um, I guess, the writing desk. And I looked this up. This looks like a Breda 71. So it's a 22 long rifle pistol um, that has 10 plus one rounds in it. So, so um, I say we should count these rounds. We should count the rounds for the rest of the show to see how much she has. Because fun fact from the game. So in the game, when she has a gun, she can, when you're playing as Joel, you can, she shoots like infinite, doesn't matter. But when you play as her, she runs out of ammo if you shoot too much. So I'm curious to see, like, will her gun actually run out of ammo? Cool Easter egg. Let's oh, watch. Yeah. So we're going to be counting rounds fired in yep. subsequent episodes just to see. So far, zero. <laughs> so far, zero. Yeah. Well, Joel doesn't even know she has it yet. So. All right. Remember when she like, when she opened the drawer and immediately looked up, like, that's so right. Yeah. That's, I I have done this before. I'm like, <laughs> adult. <laughs> Do they know you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah. No, that was very realistic because she's like, I'm gonna get in trouble. <laughs> it's immediate. <laughs> Although it is pretty ridiculous that Joel won't let her take a a gun since, I mean, yeah, limited resources. Not? I get it, but you gotta you gotta load up. You know. I would think I mean, that it wasn't limited. They didn't have limited resources resources once they were in the basement because there were so many right. guns there. So many the guns. only way that it made sense to me was that Joel was worried that she would shoot at an incorrect time and then like give away their position or something. But otherwise, yeah, give her a gun. I mean, what the main thing they have in this journey is time. Train her up. Get on the same page. I mean, you're hanging out day in, Ooh. day out. Train her up, you know. But Joel get on the same is page. Joel is rushing to try to get to his brother Tommy because he thinks Tommy's in trouble. Yep. But I guess there is no rush for Ellie to get to the scientist. Like, it wasn't right. said to be urgent. But I mean, they're heading west. They're in Boston. Yeah. We're talking uh, thousands yes, yes. plus miles. You know, we're yeah. walking briskly so you can't talk. I mean, you're going to be hiking and talking and camping. So you're going to have time to talk and train, you know. Talk and train. But do you have time and is it safe to do shooting practice? I, I say it's safer to do shooting. It's safer to train her up and get on the same page and get her armed than mm -hmm. it is to not have her ready for scenarios. That's right. You have because the time. Do it. If you get in some type of scenario where you're like, even if you're just like, stay put here and wait for an opportunity, then Joel can maneuver around, do go wherever he needs to go, mm -hmm. and then set her up for an easy shot. That's better than having no shot. That's right. And if you're if he's worried about her decision making with the gun, which I guess would be the big thing, mm -hmm. let's get on the same page. You know. You know, and right. you don't have to fire the weapon to train and do reps. You know, right. I mean, although for accuracy stuff, it helps a lot to actually. But shoot. if it's absolutely right for, but the the primary problem is going to be decision making. Not agreed. You know, agreed. So for her, if she knows she's not accurate, then that means don't shoot until they're a certain distance, mm -hmm. close. You know, that's. The I guess it also. Over, it also know. teaches her to keep distance rather than defaulting to her knife. Yeah. That's right. So keep distance, run away if you can, but trained up on the gun just in case. Yeah. yeah. And I guess in this situation, children would mature very rapidly because they would need to be aware of all the dangers. Right. And I really, I, I can't, I think the amount of time they have, because you can only hike so many hours in the day with limited True. calories, limited water. You're gonna, there's gonna be a lot of downtime, a lot of campfires. You have no phone, you have no internet, you have no job. What are you going to do? It's training time. Like you have hours and hours and hours to do this. Hmm. So he should armor up. 
armor up. Even if she's just a mule for him for to carry more guns for him. Oh yeah, I mean, that's at least true. do that. Yeah. Especially if there's ammo available at Bill and Frank's, take them. Take them. Yeah, that was lots of ammo. Yeah. And he's very organized. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's beautiful. All right, so we're uh, curious to see what happens in the next episode. We'll get back to uh, Joel and Ellie on the road. On the road in The Last of Us, season one, episode yeah. four, coming up. Yep. Yeah. See you guys next time.